Hey, this is Coach Boydston, and in this screencast, we're going to be looking at what we call non-Mendelian genetics. So these are some situations in genetics that go against that uh, dominant and recessive and just two alleles for one trait scenario that we talked about with Gregor Mendel and his situation with his pea plants. And so let's take a look at a few of these. You can see them listed here. Uh, the first one, and we're going to actually knock out two birds with one stone here, is multiple alleles and codominance. And if you remember, in Gregor Mendel's studies, we had like a tall pea plants, and you had two forms of the gene, two alleles. It was just tall or short. Well, here for blood type, what you see is we actually have one, two, and three alleles. And if you remember, when we had two alleles for a trait, there was only a possibility of having three different genotypes. In this case, where you add one extra allele, you end up with nine possible genotypes that could occur, um, or possibilities, uh, as far as with with the different genotypes that you could get. And so if you look here, we'll look at one example. Um, you take A, well it could have this genotype and have A blood, or it could have this genotype and have A blood. So it could have be homozygous for A blood, or it could be heterozygous with the other one being the recessive uh, form of the gene, which controls O blood, and it's still going to be A because that idea of dominance over masking the recessive still applies right here. Now with B blood it's the same thing. You could be uh, homozygous with two B alleles or you could be heterozygous where the other one happens to be the recessive and so that dominance going to over mask it. You have B blood. Now here's what I want to draw your attention to is this genotype right here where you have two dominant alleles, a dominant for A and a dominant for B. Well, in that case right there, both of those dominant alleles are going to be expressed. And so a person here is not only going to have A blood, they're going to have A B, what we call A B blood. And so if you look down here in the bottom, right, just to give you a, a mental image of that, if you look here, you have A blood type. And you'll notice it has all one type of antigen, which is the characteristic of A blood here on the outside, these little dots. Um, you have B blood, has all this type of antigen. Well, over here where you have A B blood, because it's codominant, both of those uh, antigens are being expressed. So you have both uh, the purple ones here and kind of the greenish ones here showing up. The traits, both traits are being expressed. It's kind of like, have you ever seen a cow before that's white with black dots? Or a dog that's brown with some black specks? It's because it's, there's a codominant situation in his genes there where both of the dominant alleles are being expressed. Uh, another example that's different than Mendel's examples is this idea of incomplete dominance. It's where, obviously, it, the dominant allele is not really all that dominant. It's, it's incomplete. And so what happens here is the red here is dominant. The, the white is also dominant. And so rather than one of them, uh, both of those alleles showing up or being expressed and us having a red and white polka dotted flower, you get an intermixing of the two alleles producing, in this case, a red and a white would produce pink. And so we call that incomplete dominance. And so just looking at codominance versus incomplete dominance, uh, this picture here on the left is a codominant situation. You have a red allele and a white allele. They're both dominant, and they're both being expressed in this situation. All right, which that would drive Gregor Mendel crazy, uh, that idea. Uh, his, his studies were very simple with dominance always over masking and recessive. Having this situation happen would, would, would just boggle his mind a little bit. Um, down the bottom right, you have incomplete dominance where you have two dominant alleles, but they're not completely dominant. We're getting an intermixing of the two alleles producing a mixture of those two traits. And so in this case, pink. Uh, the final trait or the final type of genetics in this non-Mendelian genetics, the scenario that I want to show you today, is this idea of sex-linked genes because our sex chromosomes are different. And so if you remember this, this is actually a karyotype. It shows all of our chromosomes. Remember, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Well, this pair down here, this X and this Y, those chromosomes are what we call the sex chromosomes. So this is actually a karyotype for a male. Males always have an X and a Y, whereas females are going to have two X chromosomes. And if you look here, this picture here, you'll notice the X chromosome is much larger than the Y. There's, there's more genes that ride on that X chromosome than there are on the Y chromosome. So why is this important? Why, was, why is this so difficult to understand sometimes? Well, let's say there's a disease or there's a, a trait that rides on the X chromosome. Well, it could be dominant, could be recessive. If it's dominant, well, then obviously, in this case, you can see here the mom, she could pass the X down to the, to the son. 
What's the only uh, chromosome a dad can pass down to his son? It's the Y chromosome. All right, because if you pass down his X, then no longer be a son, it would be a daughter. <laughs> so uh, because males have an X and a Y, they always get the Y chromosome from their dad. And so, but if you look here, both males and females will have an X-linked trait that's dominant fairly equally. But now look over here where it's recessive. Let's say the trait is controlled by a recessive allele on the X chromosome. Well, we're going to see it show up in males more often. And here's why. If it's a recessive trait, you know in the past for a recessive trait to happen, you had to have two recessives because if the dominant was there, it was going to overmask it. Well, if you're a female, that applies because you have two X's and since it rides on the X chromosome, in order for you to have the disease, you would have to have two recessive alleles. Whereas for males, you could have just one recessive and you're going to have the disease. So if you look here, this mom, she passed down the recessive allele here to, uh, to the son. And then obviously the son got the Y chromosome from dad. Now one recessive has given him this disease because there is nothing on the Y to overmask that recessive. So anytime it's an X-linked chromosome disease, males are going to be more likely to get it. And just to finish this out, uh, a couple common X-linked diseases that occur on that X that men are going to be more likely to get are red-green colorblindness, hemophilia, where your blood doesn't clot quite like it's supposed to. Also, this one called ADL. Um, interesting story. Uh, there's actually a movie called Lorenzo's Oil. Uh, the parents uh, had, a, had a child that had this, and it's usually passed down to a son from his mother because it is on the X chromosome, uh, and it is controlled by a recessive allele. And so the mother was pretty torn up about that being passed down to her. Um, but they actually went out and found the cure for it. These parents did that. And so it's a really cool story. Lorenzo's Oil, look it up. Uh, but that's controlled by recessive alleles. And so I figured I'd finish out this screencast on these non-Mendelian genetic scenarios with a little test on are you red, green, colorblind? So I have two, three circles here. Each circle has a number in it. See if you can figure out what number is in each circle. Give you a second. All right, if you said 6, 42, 15, then you're okay. If not, then you might have that X-link recessive gene for red, green, color blindness. So 6, 42, 15. All right, so just a little fun there. And if you're red, green, color blind, it doesn't mean the end of the world. You're okay. Uh, but I'm Coach Boydston. Uh, hope that was helpful to you guys. You guys have a good day.